no. You're I don't want to. I need to get away from you because my instincts are getting away from you. All right, you're going to the raffle, Alyssa. Get the f out of here. And I don't want to be here. Of course, I don't want to be here. Take my f***ing arms off. Have you ever seen a situation spiral out of control because of someone's outrageous behavior? In this intense video, watch as law enforcement faces off against a Karen who's completely lost her cool. Let's start with this drunk woman who causes a crash and gets placed in the wrap. On April 9th, 2023, a series of alarming events unfolded involving Alyssa, a 30-year-old woman who was at the center of a hit and run accident in Las Cruces. The incident began when Alyssa collided with another vehicle and, despite the damage and presence of witnesses, attempted to flee the scene. The victim, observing the suspect's reckless behavior, followed Alyssa to a nearby parking lot and promptly called the police. Upon the arrival of the Las Cruces police, Alyssa exhibited clear signs of intoxication. She appeared disoriented and her speech was notably slurred. When officers attempted to administer field sobriety tests, Alyssa refused to comply, complicating the situation further. Her non-cooperation led to her being removed from the vehicle and restrained using the wrap restraint system to ensure her safety and control her aggressive behavior. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, so what happened? I thought somebody was following me. Okay. And that uh, scared me a little bit. Where'd you come from? I was uh, leaving my friend's place and uh, I was trying to get home, but I felt like somebody was following me. Okay. And yeah, so well, it sounds like. I was like... trying to get to a safe place. Okay. How much have you had to drink? More than enough, I guess. Maybe not. What would you say more than enough is? A uh, drink an hour. A drink an hour? How many, how many hours were you drinking? I was there for at least three hours. So, and three so drinks? Three drinks every hour. So, is that what? Three beers, three shots, three wine beers. glasses, or? Three beers, one shot, probably. Probably three beers, one shot? Okay. You don't know where your friend lives? Unless I punch it into my phone, I can't tell no. you where. Okay. Are you willing to do uh, standardized field sobriety tests? Only because I'm not um, actually able to do those. I have Why? a weakened toe. Um, I have a se severed Achilles. If you're, uh, you know, intoxicated, are you willing to do it? No. I just need to well, get certain. I mean, I'm not able to do certain No, like I said, tests, you, th so. th these. These are the alternative tests, and they, they don't require you to listen. You're, you're, you're making this bigger than it needs to be, okay? I don't want you to get any, in any more trouble than you already are, okay? <laughs> so, at this point, you you are gonna have to get out of the car, you are going to jail. Okay? Uh, can I go call my mom? There's no way around right this. Now? You are gonna get arrested for DWI, okay? You, you are very intoxicated. You hit a vehicle and you fled. No, you're I don't want to. I need to get away from you because my instincts are getting away from f***ing abusive men, and I need you to get the f*** away from me. Okay, and you I'm don't need to jump. hold on to me the way you are. Don't hold on to me the way you are. No, don't hold on to me. No, 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 no. Alright, you're going to the wrap, Alyssa. Get the f*** out of here. And I don't want to be here. Of course, I don't want to be here. Take my f***ing arms off. And I'm gonna do it. Given the situation, Alyssa was transported to a hospital for medical clearance. Despite being evaluated, she continued to refuse to submit to a breath alcohol test, which is a critical component in determining her level of intoxication. Following medical clearance, Alyssa was transported to the Las Cruces Police Department for further processing. Can I not have 
have an emergency contact or no? Alright. Come take a seat and show. I you know, like to talk to shit. Me. That's all. I like it. Well, nine, no, you're getting something. Sorry about that. I'll be right back. Come on. Thank you. Come sit down and chill out. Alyssa faces charges of aggravated DUI due to her impaired driving and refusal to cooperate with sobriety testing. This charge typically involves high blood alcohol content back or significant damage resulting from a crash. The legal consequences for aggravated DUI under New Mexico statutes SS68102 are severe, including fines up to $5,000, imprisonment ranging from 18 months to three years, and an extended suspension of driving privileges. In addition, Alyssa was also charged with hit and run for leaving the scene of the accident, which involves failing to provide contact information or assist the injured. Additionally, she faced a charge for not having proper vehicle registration, which further complicated her legal situation. Her refusal to comply with police instructions and combative behavior led to charges of resisting arrest. Under New Mexico statutes SS667201, the hit and run charge can result in fines, imprisonment, and restitution. Resisting arrest can also lead to fines and possible incarceration depending on the circumstances of the resistance. Seems like this woman just landed herself in hot water, but this is not the worst case. Just wait until you see this next one. On February 23rd, 2023, Ohio State Highway Patrol Sergeant Gockstetter observed a vehicle with a broken tail light prompting a traffic stop. The driver, a 20-year-old woman, exhibited signs of impaired motor skills and displayed dilated pupils and red eyes. These observations led Sergeant Gockstetter suspected that the driver might be under the influence of drugs or alcohol. The driver was asked to perform several standardized field sobriety tests. have an idea or do you have a valid license? Okay. Were you in a crash or something? Um, no, I had my car parked in the rain on the street. You Someone did a hit and run. Oh, okay. So okay. I was able to get the license. All right, go and step out here real quick while there's no traffic. During the stop, the driver revealed that she had been smoking marijuana earlier in the day. Despite her cooperation, Sergeant Gockstetter noticed that her motor skills were slow and her eyes appeared unusually red, which further suggested impairment. The officer conducted several tests to assess her condition. Hey, do you have your insurance? No. How long ago did you smoke marijuana? Like earlier today, your pupils are just real big is why I was asking. Tonight or? Have you smoked today at all? Okay. Do you care if I patch you down for weapons? Okay, go ahead and stick your hands back here behind your back. Back here. Nothing sharp on you. I've never done this before, like ever. I've okay, seen. nothing sharp on you at all? No. I just want to check you make sure you're not impaired. Your eyes are just a little red and then uh, your pupils are dilated. Go ahead, Seba. I just want to check you make sure you're not impaired at all. Do you have any issues with your legs? Any trouble walking? I have, no. Okay. I have muscle issues, but I don't have any trouble walking. Okay, but you can walk fine and everything. Okay, just come up here. Have you used any type of drugs today? Okay. They sell red tape that you can get to put over that tail light just so, because the white light the tape, to the rear. The, the it, red tape, would yeah. I get pulled over still if I had that? No. Because someone told me to do that. Yeah. And then I got told by my mom that I wouldn't get in trouble for it. First is field sobriety test. The driver was required to perform a series of standardized field sobriety tests. These included a heel to toe walk, a one leg stand, and an estimation of 30 seconds with closed eyes. The driver struggled with these tasks, which is indicative of possible impairment. Here, I'm just gonna take a look at your eyes. Go ahead and interlock your hands on your face like that. Have you had any recent concussions, anything like that? Are you wearing contacts? Are you supposed to? Okay. See my pen here? You're just gonna hold your head still and follow my pen with your eyes. Try to make your eyes go all the way in. All right, 
Alright, you can put your foot down. Stop. How long was it? Around 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay. Second is medical and drug evaluation. The driver was questioned about her recent drug use and any medical conditions that might affect her performance. She reported a lack of sleep and a persistent eye condition that she claimed had been present since childhood. However, these explanations did not fully account for the signs of impairment observed by Sergeant Gockstetter. Okay, so if you were to rate your scale on a, a scale of one, one being sober, no drugs or alcohol or anything in your system, 10 being the drunkest or highest you've ever been, where would you be at right now? I'm sorry. But yeah, your eyes are just telling a different story, like some type of drug use. I told you, I smoked a couple days ago. I mean, that's not I mean, gonna do I've it. I've been working since Monday. I haven't gotten no sleep for, what, five days now? Okay. I never, I never got diagnosed with mm -hmm. but it's almost like there's black spots and they're very tiny, so it's like I can see fine, but my pupils have been big my whole life, if you really think about it. Okay. Following the field sobriety tests, the driver was arrested and transported to the Illyria police station. There, she provided a urine sample for testing, which would later be used to confirm the presence of drugs in her system. All right, so I am gonna have to take you, place you under arrest to take you back to the PD to offer you the urine, but then we'll still get you home tonight, okay? Okay. All right, so go ahead and step out. I just gotta put cuffs on you. Can I talk to my mom too? Yep, we'll go call her. Go ahead, turn around. I'm just gonna read your rights. You have the right to remain silent. If you say can't lose your in court, you have to talk to an attorney for advice. Before we ask any questions, and you have an attorney present if you have any question, if you're unable to pay an attorney, one will be appointed to you prior to any question episodes later. And if you wish to answer questions now without your attorney present, you can stop answering any time. We refuse to take any chemical tests required by law. Your Ohio driver privileges will be suspended immediately and you have to pay if you have the privileges reinstated. If you take any chemical test required by law and are found to be out above the prohibited amount of alcoholic controlled substance or metabolite of controlled substance. So this doesn't need much, just like halfway up is fine. Three quarter. Okay. The driver faced several charges related to the traffic stop and her impaired state, including operating a vehicle impaired, driving on a temporary permit, driving with no seat belt, and possession of cannabis and paraphernalia, specifically vape pens containing cannabis. On October 23, 2023, she pled guilty to two amended charges, reckless operation of a vehicle reflecting her unsafe driving behavior and having physical control of a vehicle under the influence relating to her impaired ability to control the vehicle. From a legal standpoint, the driver's case involves several key violations under Ohio law. Operating a vehicle under the influence OV is addressed by Ohio Revised Code SS 4511.19, which imposes significant fines, potential jail time, and mandatory license suspension. The exact penalties vary depending on the driver's blood alcohol concentration back and any prior offenses. Additionally, driving without a valid license or permit, as per Ohio Revised Code SS 4510.12, results in further fines and legal repercussions due to the driver operating with only a temporary permit instead of a valid license. Driving without a seatbelt under Ohio Revised Code SS 4513.263 typically incurs a fine but also contributes to overall charges related to safe driving practices. All right, let's move to this next case where things might get even messier. On March 1st, 2023, a 19-year-old University of Central Florida student was stopped by a campus police officer for a traffic violation involving an obstructed license plate. The student's license plate frame partially covered her plate, making it difficult to read the state's name. This obstruction prompted the officer to initiate a traffic stop to address the issue. During the traffic stop, as the student searched her wallet for her driver's license, the officer noticed what appeared to be a fake ID. Upon closer inspection, it was revealed that the ID indicated the student was over 21 years old, which was inconsistent with her actual age. The officer, recognizing the ID as counterfeit, informed the student that possessing a fake driver's license is a felony under Florida law. Hi. Sergeant Lark with the police department. We have a license registration. Stopping you for something we call obstructed tag. The border around your license plate is covering the word New Jersey. It's not legal to have in the state of Florida. I've seen a couple of things in your wallet that look like driver license. Can I see the rest of them? That one right there looks like maybe Connecticut or something. Oh, I was right. Cool. So this looks pretty fake to me. Same name. Date of birth 430.04, but this says 2001. 
So when I run this, this is going to come back no record found, right? Did you know that possession of a uh, counterfeit driver license is a felony? No. Yeah, it's a felony. Like you could be arrested okay. right now, handcuffed, and taken to jail. Okay. Poor choice. I'm sorry. Real bad. Really very stupid. Where'd you get it? Online. Like a website, fake driver's licenses or something? Yeah, I think this is the right registration. It is. Okay. Yeah, I'll take it. Now we can talk about this whole felony thing. Okay. We've never seen any of our things, you know, fake to felony. We have signs up around campus, don't have fake IDs, it's a felony. It's got little like bubble character and a jail jumpsuit. Never seen any of this stuff. Despite the seriousness of the offense, the officer decided not to arrest the student. Instead, he issued a warning and informed her that she would be referred to the university's administrative discipline review board. The officer explained that while the possession of a fake ID could lead to criminal charges, he chose to forego arrest in this instance, provided the student complied with the necessary corrective actions, including addressing the obstructed license plate. Like I said, this is a felony. So are you a student? Yeah. Cool. So um, you're going to get a student affair referral because you have committed a felony. Okay. okay but I'm going to tell you right off the bat. I'm not planning on taking you to jail. I am obviously seizing the license, that's evidence. I'm not charging you criminally, okay? But understand that I could have, and everything I needed, body cam, recorded. That being said, anytime any of our students are involved in criminal activity, even if I wanted to cut you the biggest break in the world and say, you know what, I'm not gonna do it, I would get in trouble for that. You're gonna have to go before, you know, the student board and explain the goings on and they can choose to sanction you in a number of ways because you committed a felony, they could technically throw you out of the college. I can't tell you that people have or have not been unless it's so egregious that like student affairs calls us in to issue a trespass to that person on the spot. So if that happens, you know, but again, I'm telling you on camera, I haven't seen it, okay? The student's encounter with the police did not result in immediate criminal charges, but will involve an administrative review by the university. This referral to the university's administrative discipline review board is a significant consequence as it could lead to various academic penalties, including suspension or expulsion, depending on the board's decision and the university's policies regarding felony offenses. We're a college, we expect fake IDs. It's just, it happens to be a pretty high level crime for what it is. You season it, you'll hear from student affairs, whatever they decide to do, it's on them. You might have to take a class, you might have to write a letter. I have no earthly idea because again, you know, I never see or hear from any of those folks. So um, I would say you could leave it, but you could get stopped anytime between now and whatever, right? There's only a couple of us doing traffic at the moment, so probably okay, but as long as it's on there, it's a violation. Okay. You know how much longer to go? Was it a, a year and some change? 2004? And this is 23, so, okay, maybe it's like two years. But, look, we know, okay? But you don't want to get caught with that stuff. The other cop, if they decided they wanted to make a felony collar, easiest one in the book. Under Florida statute, chapter 316.605, having an obstructed license plate occurs when the plate is partially covered, impeding its visibility. This violation is considered a non-criminal traffic infraction, punishable by a fine of up to $114. While it may result in a citation, it does not typically lead to criminal charges. In contrast, possession of a counterfeit driver's license is a more serious offense under Florida statute chapter 817.567. This is classified as a third degree felony, which carries significant penalties, including up to five years in prison, five years of probation, and a fine of up to $5,000. All right, fellas, what do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more interesting and educational content in the future. Thanks for your support. The officers start with a polite request. They ask her to turn off the vehicle and present her driver's license. How you doing, ma'am? I know, we got a call about it. You'll turn off your vehicle for me? Sure, I just got started, but okay. You good. What's so? What's going on with you? I'm sick. I need to go home to see my dad because okay. I'm sick. Okay. They know that. Yes, ma'am. You got your driver's license on you? I sure do. I just got it back. This initial interaction is standard procedure, aimed at ensuring safety for everyone involved. Karen's compliance, mixed with her claim of needing to see her father because she is sick, sets a curious and uneasy tone right from the start. I'm sick, I need to go home to see my dad. Okay. The officers quickly notice Karen's erratic behavior. 
They ask her if she is taking any medications or drugs, to which she replies negatively. Are you taking any medications or drugs? Yes. However, her speech patterns and actions suggest otherwise. She talks about needing powder and mentions her contact lenses multiple times. The officers observe that her pupils are dilated, a potential sign of impairment. All right, you say you are wearing contacts right now? I can't see them. You can step back to the back of my eye. They try to determine if there are any underlying physical or mental health issues, but Karen's defensive and inconsistent responses make this challenging. So this is the tip of the pen. I just want you to follow the tip of the pen where my finger is, all right? I'm not doing this. You're going to give me my license back. Throughout the encounter, the officers strive to remain calm and professional. They repeatedly tell Karen that their primary concern is her safety. They want to ensure she is okay to drive. You haven't drank them today? No, okay. I wouldn't be able to drive the car. Despite their efforts, Karen's agitation grows. You're, really, I can drink and drive? No, ma'am. Is that what you're telling me? No, they lied to me. She insists there is nothing wrong with her and demands to leave. This situation highlights a common challenge for law enforcement, balancing the need to assess an individual's condition while trying to keep the situation from escalating further. The situation takes a significant turn when the officers ask Karen to perform a field sobriety test. She refuses. Are you refusing to submit to this sobriety test? Yes, field sobriety? I am. Okay. Okay, right. I am refusing. Claiming she is an angel and does not need to prove her sobriety. I don't believe that it is necessary because I am an angel. Her refusal to comply raises the officer's suspicions even more. They explain the importance of ensuring she is safe to drive, but Karen becomes belligerent. Test to make sure that you're safe to drive, okay? She offers to let them search her car instead, which they decline. Their focus remains on her immediate impairment. In Florida, the penalties for driving under the influence DUI and obstruction of justice resisting arrest can be severe, reflecting the seriousness of these offences. Although this Karen refused to take a field sobriety test, the officers observed signs of possible impairment, such as dilated pupils and erratic behaviour. In addition, she refused to comply with the officers' requests, such as performing a field sobriety test and stepping out of her car. Her actions of driving away when instructed to stay also constitute resisting arrest and obstruction of justice. According to Florida law, Chapter 316.193 has tough penalties for a first time DUI. The fines and jail time depend on how drunk you were and if there were minors in the car. A lower blood alcohol level, BAL, means a lower fine, $500, $1,000, and shorter jail time, up to six months. But that gets harsher with a higher BAL or a minor present, fines of $1,000, $2,000, and up to nine months in jail. On top of that, your license gets suspended for 180 days to a year, it's important to note that resisting arrest is a completely separate offence with its own penalties. As per Chapter 843.01, resisting an officer with violence is a first-degree misdemeanour with fines up to $1,000 and imprisonment for up to one year. But her crime did not end there. Karen's decision to drive off, despite the officer's instructions, marks a critical escalation. This act of defiance and evasion prompts the officers to pursue her and stop her again. Please, get out of the car. Get, get, get out of the car. What are you going to do? You've got me here no, for no, no reason. Stand at the back of your I'm car. On, I'm on one. No, let me see. When they catch up, the situation becomes physical as she resists their attempts to detain her. Get away from me, mother. Where's your car? Oh, you mess with me. You're in trouble. 
The officers continue to ask her to step out of the car and cooperate, but she resists. I need your help on that one color spring! Grab the keys. I need your help on that one color spring! Grab the keys. I need your help on that one color spring! Grab the keys. I need your help on that spring! Grab from the other side. This interaction highlights the difficulties law enforcement faces when individuals refuse to comply and the need to ensure everyone's safety. The final interaction results in Karen's arrest. Despite the officer's numerous attempts to resolve the situation peacefully, her continued resistance and erratic behavior leave them no choice but to detain her forcibly. Was it worth it? Throughout the process, the officers emphasize their concern for her safety and that of others. But Karen's actions necessitate their intervention. Clearly, this is not the only time when Karen is arrested and causing a scene. Just wait until you see this next Karen. On April 19th, 2024, officers responded to 4 Faraday Lane, Palm Coast, regarding a highly intoxicated female with dissociative identity disorder. From the start, the woman is visibly confrontational and challenges the officer's authority. The individual was just- Let me leave the premises? No, ma'am. No, no, no. No, ma'am. Oh! Get this out. How about no, you come lean out the patrol car real quick, okay? No. Discovered near the junction of Faraday Lane and Fawn Lane. Approaching the officer's patrol vehicle with an aggressive demeanor, she appeared unsteady on her feet. The officer noted a pronounced smell of alcohol coming from her. Upon being asked to stand beside the patrol car, she grew increasingly upset and started shouting, creating a disturbance in the neighborhood. Don't mess with traffic, me. Okay? She refuses to comply with their requests to calm down, setting a defiant tone early on. Don't mess with me. Okay. I am sick. Her refusal to cooperate and repeated demands to be released highlight her disregard for the officer's instructions and legal protocols. As the situation progresses, the woman makes dramatic claims, such as having HIV, which appear to be attempts to manipulate the officers or gain sympathy. I am going to die. Why Do you, you understand? Why you because I have HIV. These claims distract from the initial reason for the police presence and complicate the officer's efforts to maintain order. Throughout the interaction, the officers maintain a calm demeanor and attempt to reason with the woman. Why? Why do I have a severely cut up hand? Why? That's what we're trying to find yeah. out. Yeah. They explain their actions and try to manage her escalating behavior professionally. However, as she becomes physically combative and continues to resist detainment, the officers are forced to restrain her to prevent harm to herself and others. Are you gonna read me my rights? Stop it. You're Are you gonna now. read me my rights? Ma'am, quit Are resisting. Are you gonna read Stop. me my rights? We can read you your rights if that's what makes no. you feel better. The woman's persistent demands to have her rights read to her reflect a misunderstanding of legal procedures or an attempt to assert control over the situation. Give me my rights! We're currently hands-on with female. Give me my right! Give me my right! Wait, okay, you want me to read you your rights, ma'am? Yeah! Okay, okay, right. okay, I'll read them to you. Yes. Despite the officer's efforts to accommodate her requests to some extent, her non-compliance and interruptions prolong the confrontation unnecessarily. If you decide to answer questions for a lawyer present, you still have the right to stop answering at any time. You also have the right to stop answering any time until you talk to a lawyer. Ma'am, do you understand your rights as I've read them to you? Yes or no? No! Roger that, then we won't ask any other questions. The woman was arrested for intoxication and assaulting police officers. So, you know what? I've got you on report right now. And you're on body cam, okay? Yeah. The whole time you're being recorded. <laughs> Body cam, yo! Body cam! Public intoxication, yo! It was a quite disturbing arrest, but not the worst. Wait until you see this next case, where Karen even tried to bite a police officer while being arrested. 
On November 23, 2023, law enforcement officers were called to 7,350 US HWWY 19 N Pinellas Park following a report of battery. Witnesses reported that the defendant was striking the wall and causing damage to property inside the premises. The initial interaction involves officers pursuing Nicole, who is instructed multiple times to stop running and comply with their commands. I swear, bitch! I swear. Stop. I swear. No, stop! I for real. I swear to God! This phase of the encounter highlights the officer's efforts to establish control through verbal orders. Nicole. Nicole. Stop. We're all over. Bitch. Let me get my feet. No. No. Stop. Nicole, stop. Turn around. Turn around. From a legal standpoint, officers are authorized to use verbal commands to assert authority and ensure public safety. However, Nicole's failure to comply escalates the situation, necessitating further intervention. I swear to God. Stop. Bitch. Taser, taser, taser. No. Officers are legally justified in using verbal commands to establish authority and attempt to de-escalate situations. Come God. On. God, for real. God. God. God, God. Get out of the door. Get out of the door. Stop. Nicole's non-compliance increases the risk of harm to herself and others justifying the escalation of force tactics used subsequently. 19. 10-4. Still fighting. God. Hold on. God. There you go. 19, 10, 15. Taser twice. Taser twice. Taser twice. Taser twice. Taser twice. Taser twice. God. 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 As Nicole continues to resist arrest, Officers resort to deploying a taser in an attempt to subdue her. The use of a taser is a commonly employed intermediate force option by law enforcement when faced with non compliant individuals. Roll over. Roll over. From a legal perspective, the use of a taser is justified if the subject poses a threat to officers' safety or is actively resisting arrest. Despite initial taser deployment, Nicole continues to resist arrest vigorously, necessitating physical restraint by officers. This phase underscores the challenges law enforcement faces in apprehending non-compliant individuals safely. From a legal standpoint, officers must balance the use of force with the duty to minimize harm, ensuring the restraint does not escalate beyond what is necessary to gain compliance. Officers are trained to employ physical restraint techniques proportionate to the level of resistance encountered. Nicole's persistent resistance necessitates continued physical control measures to ensure public and officer safety. Compliance with lawful commands is paramount, and the officer's actions aim to achieve this while mitigating risk. Hang on a second. Can you pull that up? There we go. This woman was charged with resisting arrest and battery on a police officer. What do you think? 
share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more interesting and educational contents in the future. Thanks for your support.